Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist, here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're listening to the right podcast. You're in the right place if you're looking to work smarter, not harder. If you're looking to increase your average sale price by adding more high-end and luxury clientele to your database as well as to your sold portfolio. Uh, One of the things that we really pride ourselves on on each episode is bring value. I call it meat and potatoes. We we don't want to give any fluff. We want to bring value to both agents, brokers, and team leaders so that you can have a higher probability of selling your high-end and luxury properties. Most marketplaces in most marketplaces, the, the high-end and luxury homes, if anything, are in a neutral market, but in many markets, it's what we consider a buyer's market. So we want to give you tools and resources and golden nuggets that you can take back to your marketplace and implement so that your clients have a higher probability of selling their high-end and luxury property. Again, the name of the show is Luxury Listing Specialist, but man, we love luxury buyers as well. Just like just like Kevin Costner in the Field of Dreams, if you if you remember that movie, if you build the the listing inventory, the buyers will come. So again, we really focus on listings, but we love working with buyers. So I'm really excited about um, today's uh, guest. Um, you know, we recently had on uh, one of our podcasts Brad Inman, and um, Brad had talked about. Um, how he thinks the luxury market is going to get softer in 2020. And many experts are, are saying that, uh, you know, next year is going to be a slower market overall, especially in the higher end space. So today's guest is going to be talking about uh, the, the international market. And before I bring her on, uh, just a couple housekeeping items. One, if you have any questions for us or you'd like us to cover a topic that we maybe haven't covered in the past or you want to nominate someone for our podcast, shoot us an email. Shoot me an email at michael at, mar- michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Again, any questions or any suggestions or um, if you have a, a success story, we love hearing those. And again, don't forget to check out our book. It's on Amazon, LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. And uh, if you get some value from it, leave us a review. And we just launched our luxury swag gear. Check out LuxurySpecialistGear.com for uh, some really cool uh, merchandise and that sort of thing. So with that being said, let's bring Linda Fernandez on. Linda, are you there? I'm here. Linda, what's the official title of you at the Miami Association of Realtors? You got so many designations behind your name. I I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> it's it's Chief of Communications and International. Chief of Communications and International at the Miami Association of Realtors. And Linda's been there for over 14 years, and she has um, a lot of responsibilities when it comes to um, international. And she's been heading up uh, a, an annual conference that's celebrating its 25-year anniversary. It's going to be in November at the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables, which uh, you and I met uh, in June at the Biltmore in Coral Gables when I pr- uh, pr- presented at a, an event for Cobble Banker. And the name of the event is called the Miami Global Conference, correct? Correct. Miami Global Congress. Uh, Yeah, the Miami Global Congress. uh, It's a conference that's celebrating its 25th year, and um, about 250 to 300 uh, guests or attendees uh, will be uh, attending in November. Is that about right? Yes. And uh, the reason that I wanted to have you on today Linda, and you and I spoke a little bit before we started recording, is, you know, just literally today, I fielded a call from a top agent in Lake Tahoe. She's got a $7 million listing. It's been on the market on and off for three years. They've had one showing so far in 2019. And 
she's looking for additional ideas and support, and she's considering hiring us to co- be a co-marketing agent for her. But specifically, one of the voids she's looking to fill is is getting more high net worth individuals outside of the Nevada, Lake Tahoe area. And she brought up international as well as I did. And so this is a common request that we get all the time. Hey, I want to get, you know, more eyeball traffic on the property. I want to get more high net worth individuals outside of the United States or, or Canada. And talk to us a little bit about uh, some best strategies. And I know you travel and you go to different markets and, you know, being associated with uh, the Miami Global Congress and this annual conference, um, you know, you, you get in, you bring in people from all over the world. And so talk to me a little bit about, um, first off, the conference, and then talk to me a little bit about some some best practices that you're hearing some of your members, not just at the Miami Association of Realtors, but some of the members and some of the guests that, that attend you know, the Miami Global Congress conference. Okay, so um, the Miami market, South Florida and Miami, are the top market in the U.S. for international. Some people don't realize that. Ever since we've been doing, um, since NAR started doing the study, Florida was the number one state by far, and within Florida we account for over 50% of international sales. And if you're doing luxury Targeting international buyers is is a very good thing because foreign buyers, as we've seen in our market, tend to spend more than the domestic buyer. And and now we're seeing not just international, but the New Yorkers, for example, focusing on Florida because of the new tax laws, and they also purchase at a higher price point. Um, as far as best practices in our Congress, as you said, we've been hosting this Congress for 25 years. Our CEO, Teresa Kinkinney, and the leadership at that time started the Congress. Um, our, our CEO came from a small town in Missouri to launch our international Congress and our international uh, council and has done an, an amazing job. Um, and so I started here about 14 years ago, and I've been involved ever since. And it's really a very special event. We attract representatives from most of our partner associations. So on a regular basis, we have between 12 and 15 countries represented. We host it every year right before the National Association of Realtors Conference. This year, it's November. the Congress is November 3rd through the 5th, and then the NAR conference starts on the 8th. And we, we get great feedback from, from the partners and the U.S. We, we also attract participants from agents from other areas in Florida and other states. And I, I think what's key to, I think in general to business, to public relations, which I also handle, is relationships. And um, with international, if you want to attract business, generate business, you need to establish those relationships because once you create that bond, those uh, foreign professionals are more likely to refer their clients and to even promote your market or know about your market. So. Um, when, what I've seen in the last 14 years is that those agents who, who are, you know, get out there, whether it's going to international events here because we have members who can't travel abroad, but we bring them here for the Congress so they can take advantage for, uh, you know, for a lot less money and a lot less time, is connecting with those foreign buyers. And so as we see with any industry, technology changes the way we do things. It, it enhances things. Um, with social media, with WhatsApp on your phone, but the but the core um, practice of establishing those relationships, I think, is what's most important and most effective. Uh, so relationships, connecting. You mentioned social media. You mentioned WhatsApp. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about that. So what are some um, some great resources that uh, agents that are listening they want to find out more about, uh, you know, the international markets. Do you have any, any you know, websites or free resources or reports that, that um, you know, that you'd recommend for agents or might be a book? You know, I mean, I had one mm-hmm. of our um, most listened to episodes was uh, Michi Olson talking about working with Chinese buyers and, um, right. you know, kiss, bow, and, or shake hands. Shake hands, Re- mm-hmm. Yeah, she she referenced that in, in, in the interview as being a great resource for agents to kind of um, learn. Do you have any um, suggestions as far as that's concerned, Linda? 
Well, we actually, not because it's ours, but we have like a one-stop shop for statistics called uh, SF for South Florida, sfmarketintel.com. And I post our study and the national studies on there, and I, I link out to the research pages for Florida Realtors and the National Association of Realtors. The National Association of Realtors has great reports. They've come out with a commercial one that's very interesting. They have, um, they have a report on, on outbound investment, the number one um, destinations where Americans buy abroad. They have their profile of home buyers in the U.S. That's the one I mentioned where Florida has always been number one. Um, we have our local study, and it, it gives you information on what are the top countries investing here, the trend, how they, have they, how they compare to the previous year, characteristics such as, um, you know, who spends more, do they prefer, what property types do they prefer, what areas do they prefer. So that's very insightful. And I think if you're an agent and you're interested in international, you should definitely take a look at those reports. And um, I make it easy for our members so they only have to go to one page and they can link out from there. Um, so you, you're, they're welcome to visit our pages or they can go to the National Association of Realtors uh, website and, and link directly. We as an association provide um, websites and property searches in 19 languages so that our property, you know, our listings for our members are translated automatically and they can um, post those or create their own website and, and um, connect that way. It's also a business to business platform where they can search for an agent who speaks English in Serbia. And um, if they're members of, of the platform, they can find agents that way and connect uh, via the website. Oh, that's, that's a great resource. So, so understanding the, the various languages, understanding the buying trends, um, there's some great resources out there. And is, is, is some of those links that you referenced, you referenced a, re, a website, uh, Linda, um, is that just for your uh, members of your association or is there some things there for non-members? I think there's things there for non-members. It's where we have everything, our press releases, our statistical reports every month, the quarterly reports, our international reports. Um, so I, I think it would be useful for for Perfect. anyone, and it's not password protected, so they can access it. Awesome. Well, so we'll we'll post that link if you're listening to this and you received our email with the the podcast promotion. Uh, we'll we will post that, or you can go to luxurylistingpodcast.com if you're listening luxurylistingpodcast.com and uh, look for Linda Linda Fernandez uh, episode and. Uh, we will make sure to include the direct link there. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher-end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. You know, I, I saw a gentleman speak. Um, uh, this is going back. He spoke at the Keller Williams Luxury Conference. Uh, it would have been in 2018. And I remember the average purchase price, as he shared, it was according to NAR, uh, from international buyer purchase, uh, purchased the most expensive homes, they said. And China was number one. I think the average sale price was a little over 780000 um, And then the U.K. was, was second, uh, 741 And then Canada then India, then Mexico. Um, so all international buyers he referenced at the time was a little over 530,000, and the U.S. average, U.S. domestic average was 277. So it was almost double um, mm -hmm. international buyers versus uh, U.S. buyers. Is that pretty fair? Is that I mean without actually verbatim. yes, actually yes, they like they do spend more, but our, we've seen that in our study the foreign buyer median purchase price is actually higher in Miami than in Florida and in the rest of the United States. Oh, okay. Well, good for you. Maybe I should get my license in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And at the time, um, the NAR produced the top five states for international buyers, and Florida, again, referencing a 2008 
2018 statistic uh, was number one, which sounds like it still is. Texas was number two. California was third. New Jersey was fourth. And Arizona was fifth. Um, again, this is uh, some NAR data. So, again, understanding this data is really important. Uh, if you're talking to an owner, uh, if you're talking to a client and they're wondering where the international buyers are, it's really important that you manage your client's expectations and understand your numbers locally, but also understand global trends and where those international buyers are coming from. I say it all the time. If you grow your knowledge, your confidence will grow. So, Talk to us about, uh, you're bringing in all these, you know, from 12 different countries to the conference. I, I looked at the, um, you know, the website you pr provided. It's the 25th conference. Besides amazing networking and getting to connect and build relationships, which you talked about is, is, is vital. Um, when you go travel, and I know you travel a lot internationally and abroad, um, talk to me a little bit about um, what, their perception is of purchasing real estate in the United States um, from a risk standpoint, from a, an appreciation standpoint, from a taxation standpoint. Um, talk to me a little bit about your experience from talking to some of your um, you know, international uh, colleagues. I think in general, no matter what is going on, uh, even at the worst of the financial crisis, the uh, investment in in the U.S. and in U.S. property is seen as a secure, profitable investment. And in fact, in our market, the foreign buying activity um, was so strong at when the um, when our inventory was at its highest and our sales had dropped, and we saw foreign buyers help our market recover much stronger and much faster than even the the best experts predicted. So. Um, that shows that even I remember we were at a conference at SEMA in, in Madrid, Spain, and it was pretty, you know, this was a conference that had been at one point during the boom, eight pavilions, and they had to build a tent because everybody wanted to exhibit. They had a huge professional international program, conference program, along with the expo, and it had been reduced to less than one pavilion, and it was very slow, and Spain's uh, financial crisis was you know, even worse than the U.S., and our booth was so busy that our members couldn't even have lunch. And the, all of the, the Spaniards who were wealthy or a lot of the Latin Americans who had moved to Spain when Spain changed their citizenship laws were looking to invest in the U.S. And I, I remember thinking, no matter what is going on, I mean, you hear about it, but it, it's absolutely true. I mean, you, you'll hear, well, you get the same thing in another market for less money, but the, the security of the investment and the profitability is just seen as, as something very, very secure around the world. It's good to know. Um, obviously, next year, 2020, is an election year. That might be why Brad Inman and, and others that we've had on are a little bit cautious. But as I tell people all the time, life is what drives real estate. It doesn't matter who the president is. It doesn't matter what interest rates are. You know, there's a lot of people doing well right now financially, and many times they're looking in secondary markets, um, resort markets, uh, warmer climate markets, or lifestyle markets, right? Lifestyle markets yeah. might be those of like Miami, right? Warm, beautiful yeah. climates. Could be, you know, Telluride or some, some, somewhere place like Jackson Hole where there's some great skiing and snowmobiling and, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So um, it's really important to uh, get yourself out there, step out of your comfort zone, grow your network, uh, because your network, uh, both internationally and locally, as well as other colleagues within your industry. I mean, if you're with Remax, Cobalt Banker, fill in the blank, uh, you know, get out there within your brand, but also get out with outside of your brand because real estate is really a it's a people business, and you gotta you gotta grow your network. You really need to. And so, um, Linda, do you have any? Um, any parting suggestions to anybody that is looking to, let's just say, 123 Elm Street. They have 123 Elm Street. It's a, it's a luxury listing of theirs, or perhaps it's a listing they're looking to acquire. Maybe the seller is going to be interviewing them. Um, besides the, the resources, uh, as far as trends and that sort of thing, do you have any other resources uh, or social media or websites or apps that you recommend 
to agents to, uh, from an exposure standpoint on their uh, listings? I think um, even though I am not an agent myself, I think if, you, if you're doing international, you need to be on WhatsApp. If you're, if you're doing um, uh, business or targeting Asia on WeChat, um, I get notifications about different markets and different properties around the world through WhatsApp, and I stay in touch with, um, with my international contacts. Back when they used to say, oh, the international people don't respond, or I emailed them through that platform I, I mentioned, and they didn't respond. Um, once you connect with them on WhatsApp, they're so much more likely to respond. And I've even resorted to, like, you know, we contact each other to invite each other to our conferences or to say, can you promote our Congress and we'll promote your event. Um, and I, and the same, I think the same is true of agents, like promoting properties. I've had members ask me, I need a contact in Mexico, and I've put them in touch with a contact in Mexico. And all of a sudden I've heard later, oh, they actually had a buyer for this like high-end luxury property in Miami. And they were targeting you know, affluent, buyer, um, affluent consumers in Mexico, and it worked through somebody that I knew for a member. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you never know where the opportunity is going to be. But mm-hmm. as far as what you mentioned with exposure, I think WhatsApp, um, social media is very important to position yourself on there and to be consistent and to use it, use it to your advantage. And then mm-hmm. I think you can do all of those things and and have a lot of exposure, but if you don't follow through and you don't respond, then then obviously it's not going to work. So I think mm-hmm. the follow through and the, the responsiveness is very important, which again is similar to, you know, the, to public relations. And yep. I have colleagues who don't respond, and I have media people who are shocked that I respond right away, and I always respond, and I'm shocked that you would be in PR and not respond and want to get exposure. So I think that's important in any industry, but particularly in this one, because, you know, if you don't respond, somebody else will. Yeah, no, that's great advice. We have an article going out in the Wall Street Journal uh, tomorrow about uh, man caves in, with garages, right? Like, is, is a garage an asset on some of these multi-million dollar properties? And so, um, but but she said the same thing. You know, she reached out to me. We were very responsive. Uh, it's no different than following up with a lead, right? And so, right. and being consistent and and communicating. Um, so very very good advice. Uh, do you want to share any no-nos uh, based on the international market? Is there anything that mm-hmm. um, that agents, brokerages should be really cognizant of? I, I know every culture is different, but you know, any, anything that stands out as far as you know, you want to really stay away from on social media platforms or uh, you know something that's a don't go there. A big no-no. Um, I think um, our CEO mentions this a lot, like when, with our foreign partners, for example. I think it's important to to listen to the other person because you can pick up on on cues that even you know you're reading a book about the culture and then you get there and it's kind of different. But when you're um, you know pay attention and let them talk about themselves first instead of I think we have the the um, you know we're in the U.S. we're so about business and and um, it can be very you know black and white and in other cultures. You have to listen and and um, talk about other things other than business first. Get to know each other, and that can really vary. I mean, I wasn't born in the U.S., and I think I, sometimes you forget that because we're just so used to to um, it's okay to discuss business. And in other uh, markets, it's that that would be like um, you know like a turnoff. So sure. I think you know being intuitive and and listening to them and seeing you know, where where they go if you really want to um, do business there and be successful is very important. And it's also, you know, it, it makes them feel more comfortable and uh, makes them realize you're interested in them and it's not all about you. So I think that's a very good tip. That's a very good tip no matter where the buyer's from. So thank you. That's a good reminder of being intuitive. You see so much out there about emotional intelligence right now. I go to a lot of these big conferences and you'll see a lot of breakout sessions on emotional intelligence, or maybe you've seen DISC personality profile, or Myers-Briggs, and, or mir- you've heard the term mm-hmm. mirroring, and, and these are all good reminders to each of us is to listen, be engaged, right? It's so difficult today with social media and, and text messaging.
marketing and everything else, but mm-hmm. you, know, you have to really be in, engaged to your potential client, whether it be face to face or over the phone or over you know a Skype or uh, you know a Zoom meeting, and uh, really get to to know them. Um, I had a, a guest on that um, actually was, um, I, I mentioned her earlier, but um, Michi Olson, I believe it was, talked about, you know, the president uh, is still a very respected position in China. Mm-hmm. So putting politics aside, um, th- th- she talked about, hey, if you're a, a, an anti-Trumper and bashing, you know, in some in some cultures that they will be turned off by that um, yes. just in general, because they respect that presidency. So you might, you might not even get that, that, that lead or that inquiry because of something. So I remind agents all the time, you know, somebody once asked Michael Jordan why he never talked politics. And his response was because Republicans buy sneakers too. And so I remind all the listeners, <laughs> both Republicans and Democrats and, and, and independents buy high-end and luxury homes. So just keep that in mind. Um, mm-hmm. Again, I, I'm all about unity and being kind, and, and it's amazing how we have so much in common if you turn the news off and you just talk to your neighbor. That's very so, true. So, so Linda, for, for people that want to find out more about um, the upcoming uh, conference, Congress, uh, the, the, the Miami Global Congress, I, I call it a conference, but for people that want to find out more about that in November, uh, where, where, would they, where, where should they go? Which, which, what's a good website for that? They can visit MiamiCongress.com. MiamiCongress.com, okay. Yes. The registration is open, so they, they are welcome to register starting now. Um, now is when we start adding the speakers and, and all the details, but they can see the summary of the schedule, and we always get great feedback on the programming, the networking opportunities, so it's really a great event to consider. That's awesome. Great. And if anybody wants um, uh, to, to be in touch, uh, get in touch with you, what's, uh, what's the best way? Is it email, I'm assuming? Yes. Linda with a Y, L-Y-N-D-A at Miami, R-E dot com. Awesome. Uh, Linda, this has been very insightful. I really appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, hearing more about, you know, all your successes and the Miami Association of Realtors is doing some amazing things down there and really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. And don't forget, if you have any questions, shoot us an email. Shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Share your success stories. Leave us a review. We need more reviews on on, uh, our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. And if you have any questions, let us know. Again, for more information on our certification, check out luxurylistingspecialist.com. I'm your host, Michael Lofito. Go make somebody's day today and have a great one. Take care. 